Welcome back to the Workbench After Hours podcast. My name is Keith and I'm your host. This is where we talk about the firearms community, shop talk, and everyday life experiences. Welcome back to episode number 20 of the Workbench After Hours podcast. Chris and Hunter are back with us again this week and we're almost at that century mark, which is nice. Five more to go. <laughs> so we're getting there. It's hard to believe we've been doing this for 20 weeks. Yeah, it's crazy. In a row. Yeah. I don't do anything that consistent. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of cool. So five more and we'll be at 25. Pretty cool. So first we are the whiskey we're drinking this week. And thanks to Nate the Great, we are using the bullet ice cube things. Um, so basically it just keeps our whiskey cold without watering it down. So we showed these uh, what last week and they've been sitting in the freezer and getting nice and cold. So see how those turn out. They look cool anyway in our glass. So we're drinking Redemption whiskey or yeah, Redemption bourbon. So this is, it says pre-prohibition whiskey revival. 88 proof, 44%. So yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. Is it any good? I haven't tried it yet either. I don't know. Let's go. It's got some bite. Yeah, yeah it, it does. does. And, uh, <clears throat> sorry Nate, but the bullets have not infused hardly any cold into the... Nope, not yet. <laughs> Still warm. Yeah, the, it is. So I might have to throw some ice in yeah, there. Yeah, I might drop a cube or two in there. <laughs> but, yeah, still, still freaking awesome. Though. Yeah, they're badass for sure. But, yeah, so what we did in Guns this week, I know Chris has a... We did something with Chris, and Hunter has a story to go along with that. <laughs> so I am going to let them take that over. So this week in guns, I got my safe in finally. Uh, it was really interesting because I pulled into I got it at Nebraska Furniture Mart for for everyone that doesn't know that. So I pulled in. They ask you for like your make a model, right? So I said Honda Ridgeline. I pulled into the bay. I'm sitting there waiting. Well, there's a Ridgeline behind me, and the guys come up to him like, "Hey, did you get a gun safe?" He's like, "No. Why would I get that?" <laughs> And the guy, I was like, oh, okay. Feisty. Like, yeah. <laughs> and the guy's like, okay. And then they're sitting there, look around. They look up. I'm like, oh. I was like, hi. I'm the other Ridgeline. <laughs> <laughs> so they uh, got it loaded. They made it look really easy. Like I had the tailgate open, swung open. And then they're like, uh, this thing going to fit. So they picked it up and I swung it back open, closed it, and put it down. And they tied it with like rope pretty much. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, we can't use your... Uh, tie downs i was like oh, great so they I, twined the shit out of it yeah yeah it was they did a really good job it didn't go anywhere but i also put one ratchet strap across the back to make sure it doesn't fall out on the highway and ruin someone's day because 70 miles an hour 500 pounds probably is gonna do some damage yeah and unfortunately i helped hunter with some yard work and i'm like you're, you're coming <laughs> to help me he's the the youngest of our group and so i'm like you know you're in the best shape out of all of us. Let's, let's put, you to, put you to work. to work. Yep. So, yeah, sorry about that. So, we started moving it in. We got it unloaded from the truck, unbolted from the pallet. All everything, fairly easy. Everything was working. And then I, uh, I brought over these lifting straps I have, which essentially two people put on a harness. And then there's, you know, you run the strap through, and it's like, that's about waist height. And uh, sorry about that. And anyways... I've used these things like at least 50 times by now and they're te it's tested for like 2000 pounds. The strap is. And so, all right, perfect. Well, we get it off, we get it strapped up and we get Chris. I don't know why he wasn't help manning it, but it was his brother-in-law <laughs> and I, uh, so we get it on the strap, we lift it up, you know, it's all legs, easy peasy. We get into the garage to, and he's got a split level house so we get into the first landing and we were trying to decide how because we were gonna have to set it down um to set it up right so we could then lean it down and get it going down the stairs because it wasn't going to fit the way we had it and while we were standing there discussing what we were going to do the strap just snaps <laughs> and um luckily on that first landing there's there's one step. step yeah and so 
the step took the brunt of it, but I was on the lower side. So it hit and then rocked over on top of my foot hurt like a motherfucker, but I could, uh, wiggle my toes and I walked around and didn't feel like anything was broken. It just hurt pretty bad. And then I kind of ended up limping around on it that day. Just like kind of, I think scared more than anything to put pressure on it. <laughs> and then I, I got to, uh, to my in-laws and my wife's like, let me see, let me see it. So I take it off and had a decently, decently dark bruise at that point already. But the worst of it was it just split the skin on the top of my foot. And so thankfully nothing's broken. I get, uh, by the next day, just with some ibuprofen and icing, I was, I was pretty much fine. And now the only thing that sucks is trying to get a shoe on or off. It, it, uh, rubs a little bit. It rub. It's like, that's when that pressure of yeah. when you're getting your foot in it, it hurts for, you know, a little bit, but thankfully that step <laughs> yeah. was there. Otherwise, I mean, that would have been both for you or both for me and your brother-in-law. We yeah. probably would have had four broken feet between the, yeah. the two of us. That was, yeah. Ooh, that would have sucked. <laughs> 400 pounds. Ooh. Well, and Hunter played it off so well. Like I, I was, I didn't, I heard it fall, but I didn't see what happened or anything. And then, um, you know, I had no idea it fell on your foot uh -huh. until like a while later. Somebody was pointing it out. Are you okay? I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, you played that off so well. <laughs> I just, I think I was more like. Got the adrenaline. Yeah, going. <laughs> adrenaline. You're scared, you know. So you're like, I, I was just trying to test it more than anything because I've had one bad break. Other than that, in my life, I snapped both radius and ulna and I had to have surgery on that. But. I just like flashbacks to that. I'm like, please don't let my foot be shattered. That's going to be, that'd be a, a bitch of a, a recovery. Yeah, yeah. That'll really affect your 10 tournaments for this year. Yeah. Yes, it would. <laughs> That's for sure. Yes, yeah, it would. Scooter. But <laughs> we, throw all yeah. <laughs> we eventually got it downstairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It actually wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be like wide and tall, but it's still, the way it was, we had to get it in was a tight fit. So you could really only have two people on it yeah. getting it in there. There wasn't room for two guys on each side, unfortunately, where we were going with it. But so got it downstairs, set it up. It was leaning a little forward. Yeah. Did you put some I went shims bought, under there? Yeah, I went and bought plastic shims and wood shims um, and got it all leveled out. Still like, I wish I could have anchored it almost to the floor now just because you can still move it a little bit even with everything in it. Oh, we can do it. Uh, we're not doing that. <laughs> I don't want to even do the hassle of that. Well, I have a concrete drill. I was, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, I got to sell the house to get into a bigger house. <laughs> you can always sell the safe with the house. Uh, no. Because I don't think Hunter's going to help you move it out. Yeah, I don't know what day you're eventually going to move that out, but I'm busy. So. <laughs> I'll probably hire that one out. <laughs> but, but it was crazy, though. Once we got it upright and then headed down the steps stay. to the basement it's it was easy. it was carpet so we just like slid it <laughs> yeah and it was nothing yeah and i think what why the strap actually snapped after looking at it there was just kind of roughish metal edge on, on the bottom on the bottom yeah and i think just the pressure of that because when you look at the strap it's like a clean it's like yeah. someone took a knife to it you know it's that clean of a cut so yeah, i was just shocked that it broke oh my gosh <laughs> i was like whoa just... oh and then jasmine just berated me about it the whole time she's like I think it's because she's pregnant, but are you kidding me? What would you have done if you'd have broken your foot? You're dumb. You brought the straps. Why are you even the one that's doing it? Why isn't why, why isn't it Chris doing it with his? You know, she just started laying into me. I'm like, just trying to help out a friend. <laughs> yeah, that, that we didn't plan on that happening. We no. thought it would go smooth, smooth with the two young guys, and turns out, hey, Not. it could have been worse. <laughs> could have been worse. Yeah. At least we didn't, because when we moved mine in my old house, we damaged my wood floor. Yeah. <laughs> At least we didn't break any tile or anything in your house. Which yeah. is crazy. I mean, we did have it strapped low enough where it wasn't, it yeah. didn't fall from crazy uh, height. Yeah, but it, it was. Uh, and your foot caught most of it, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. So, and you got it all set up. You got your guns in there. You got a dehe rod. Not yet. Not I've yet. Been looking for what size to get. Uh, Did you say dehue? Yeah. Dehumidifying rod. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You kind of just said that <laughs> dehue. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking at that, and then I did make my own outlet for it. So because I saw them on Amazon, and I was like, man, all it is is an outlet, a junction box, and a suicide cord, really. And they're charging like thirty bucks for them. Mm -hmm. I went to Home Depot, did the exact same thing for 
ten dollars. I was like, dang, maybe I should just start making all these and sell them online. Right? Make a nice like I will come install an outlet yeah. in your safe for you know whatever. Yeah, 40, 50 bucks. Jeez. Yeah, way cheaper than the ones that come that are made for the safes. Yeah, because literally I just it has a hole in the back. I drilled through it with like a half inch drill bit. Got a suicide cord, ran it through, and then wired up my little outlet box and put it in the back corner of it. And that was it. There you go. So, and now you'll be able to plug in that dehumidifier rod. <laughs> yep. And then eventually, <laughs> eventually some LED lighting. So heck yeah. <laughs> well, and here's see the thing is is now you're gonna be getting more guns. Mm-hmm. Sorry, cat, but it, it happens. And now you're safe. And what up. happens if you outgrow this safe? I'm not going to. That's what I said. <laughs> Well, then you sell it to me because I'll probably be at that point where right. I'm yeah. safe, yeah. and then it'll be perfect. Yep, and I'll come help you move it. Yeah, guys. and I get the uh, <laughs> I get the uh, smash foot discount, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, the I don't have to move it discount. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, Hunter, did you do anything gun wise this week? Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I did a video on that masterpiece arms defender. I'm actually just made that go live before we started the podcast so check that out and bryce will be getting that here pretty soon so he'll once he shoots it uh we'll see what he thinks of it maybe have him on <laughs> mm-hmm. and that way he can go over it see if he when you talk to him about work see if he can get some footage of him shooting that thing okay i, would, sure. I just want to i'm interested to see what it's like especially with that faux suppressor on the end mm-hmm. how much of a flash there is and stuff like that yeah so it it's a heavy gun so there probably isn't going to be much recoil to it Compared to like a Glock 19 well, or something like that. I was surprised at how heavy it was for sure. Yeah. That I took, when I took the uh, faux suppressor off of there, it lightened it up quite a bit. Really? But yeah. <laughs> yeah, he got a kick out of uh, poor man's Mac 10 <laughs> on the, <laughs> when I showed him the picture. Yeah, well, because I was um, looking up the price of what a Mac 10 or a Mac 11 would go for right now. And I only found one on Gun Broker and the starting bid was at 11000 and then you got to add your two hundred dollar tax stamp on top of that. That was way better with some ice in it for sure. Mm-hmm. Took away it, a little bit of the heat. Yeah. Let it get a little bit colder. Got a little, uh, <laughs> a little bit sweeter tasting almost as well. Maybe it's just because that heat's not washing over yeah. yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you played disc golf today. Yep. Does this? So this was a rec league. Yes. This does not count as a tournament, right? Right. Okay. So out of ten, was your goal? How many are you at right now? Three, four, four. My fifth one for sure that I'm signed up for is in late June. I think it's it's probably the coolest tournament I'll play all year. It's a three day tournament, and the tournaments I've been playing, it's been you get there, play one round in the morning, you get an hour ish break in between, and then you play a second round at that same course. But this one Friday is going to be at Cedar Ridge, which is a course. Have you guys played that yet? It's up in Bonner. I haven't. No. Then uh, Saturday is at Shawnee Mission Park, which we played there. And then uh, Sunday is at um, Heritage, which you guys are all too familiar with. Yeah. But it's cool because it's just one round a day, three different days, but three different courses. So really looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, this these leagues, I think I explained it last time mm-hmm. maybe. But yeah, you still play as if you're playing a tournament. You still follow all the rules, but... It's um, more relaxed, way more relaxed. And yeah, so played today. It was crazy windy um, and I couldn't hit the side of a barn for the first like three or four holes while I was warming up. But thank thank God my putting was on point today. Even in the wind, I was still knocking down circle's edge. So now you know how I feel on a daily basis. Can't hit <laughs> shit. <laughs> and then by the time I warmed up and I was actually throwing it well, we were on the back nine and on this course the front nine's much more heavily wooded and the back nine's on the this massive hillside and the wind was just blunt force there and it was about twenty miles an hour today. So throwing down the, all the shots down the hill were into a headwind. So uncontrollable <laughs> all the shots up were tailwind. So when you need the extra power you weren't able to get it and it was just like it was crazy but i parked a few i putted really well but definitely uh always room for improvement stupid wind yeah stupid (laughs) wind and actually i could not believe how well i was putting in the wind um i just 
started off so rough, just drilling first available tree, <laughs> one after another. It's like, are you kidding me? So that's that's like me right there. But, yep, Chris is a tree <laughs> magnet. Yep. Yeah, so we thought we were going to have to start a little bit later today. We normally start 7.30 p.m., and I thought it was going to be 8 on my way home. I was like, I finished early. Chris, you want to get over here? And he's he was taking a quiz, and I think he was, was like, Hell yeah, I want to stop doing this and, and come shoot the podcast. So yep. <laughs> get you get you out of doing homework and stuff for a little about an, at least an hour. Yeah. During yeah. a week. I tired of it. <laughs> do not do your masters, people. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. There there's a lot of people that want to do it just to do it. Like with me, it wouldn't affect anything with my job. Like I it would just be doing it to do it. And not at this point in my life, I've been out of college so long, so I'm good. That and like a lot of these classes I'm taking right now are math, heavily on math. And like <laughs> I'm having to go back and remember statistics and that was like 2005 when I took it. Hmm. So, and then like some of it's calculus, which I've never taken. So it's like, oh crap, I got to learn this stuff real quick, I guess, for this week. And then, so I'm watching a bunch of YouTube videos on math and then trying to find ways to cheat and not 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 good at all. <laughs> well, and I was always yeah, bad probably at not a good thing to admit on the phone. I, I don't care. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Right. Right. <laughs> when, and for me, I, I think since it's all online, it'd be extremely difficult because I, I struggled at math too. And I had once I had a good teacher, it was fine. But doing, you know, sitting there in class, being able to do it that way is a lot more, it makes more sense than yeah. just somebody doing something online whether it's pre-recorded or not. And then yeah. you're like, okay, it's tough at times. I think this is the toughest that I've had so far for online college, just because usually when I take it, everything is due Sunday night at midnight. And I'm like, okay, cool. I've got the whole weekend to get everything done this semester. I've got stuff due like Wednesday at midnight and then Thursday at four, then Friday at midnight. So it's like, why can't they just make it easy and make it all <laughs> like one day? <laughs> well, I guess it should be the most challenging since it is for your masters. Yeah, I guess, but <laughs> they can't make know. it easy. Sure Otherwise, everybody's going to get one. Why not? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I thought it was a good idea, but now I'm starting to regret it. Well, you're almost done, right? Yeah, halfway. My funny thing was, my counselor was like, "Oh, this is you're going to be your easiest semester ever." And it's definitely been the hardest semester ever. Just like if this is supposed to be your easiest, what's the rest going to yeah, be like? Like, oh my gosh. I wish I had more of a warning that it was going to be all like math based and statistics. But and this is Pitt State? Yeah. Nice. Masters of Science and Technology Management. So and not, not Pittsburgh State like in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. This is a small southeast Kansas town, Pittsburgh, yep. Kansas. <laughs> no H at the end. Yep. Just a G. <laughs> Pitt State Gorillas. Yep. Hell yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, do Never been there. What? I mean, you're, he's not missing much. Well, there's honestly. more stuff now than there was when we went. I, yeah. mean, I, just, I mean, I knew people who went there. I never just made the trip down. I went to uh, UCM quite a bit. The donkeys. I mean, unless you. It's just where Austin was at, so. Know somebody in Pittsburgh or need to go there for a specific reason. There's no other reason to go. Yeah, I never saw myself going to Warrensburg, but. With uh, Austin being there, I was like, well, I'll go check it out, and you are not missing much. I can tell you that. I mean, it was fun. We were a good party school. <laughs> yeah, I guess there was yeah. nothing else to do, That's honestly. all you did was party. I was like, you didn't party on Tuesdays and Thursdays because those were test days. Every other day was a party day. <laughs> I went to KU, and every day was a party day. Well, the crazy thing is, but, like our freshman year uh, – we were in Playboy's like top ten party schools list. Ooh. So MTV came down and they got the like the real world people came. Back when it, uh, MTV was relevant. Yeah, and like. Man, you guys are old. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember we were at uh, one of the bars, I think five oh five, and the girls from Real TV were blackout drunk. That's how drunk they were, and everyone's in there like, take off your top, take off this, do that, and they're just doing it. It's like, holy crap, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, I re so I remember, because there were only so many bars in the town when we went there, and 505, which, which was on Main Street, it was on basically yep. off of 5th Street, was one of the fancier yeah. <laughs> bars. So it's like, if we wanted to go out and spend some money, and like, it, we were going to 505. So mm -hmm. I know we, we went to 5th Street, 
Yeah. Not as nice, but you got dollar tacos, like three tacos for a dollar. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what we did. <laughs> but yeah, all the other bars weren't as nice. So if you were going to 505, you were... You were having a good night. Yep. It was. You were fancy. <laughs> and then I went. I went back to it um, two years ago. I think when Marie and I were driving down to Oklahoma and stopped in it again. I'm like, man, <laughs> this isn't that nice. Even though we thought it was the nicest bar back then, it was. But it does. It probably was still nice. Yeah, it was. It's, it's nice, but. But, I mean, not nothing compared to like some of the bars you get up here in Kansas City. Yeah, when you're spending twelve to fifteen for a yeah, yeah for a cocktail. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they they've definitely added a lot more stuff. Like Main Street, a lot of buildings were vacant. Yeah. Now they're full of like little coffee shops and all that kind of stuff popping up. They now have a Buffalo Wild Wings, which sucks, sucks. because I would have loved to have that. Yep. yep. We tried to save you a lot of diarrhea, probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> we tried to start a petition to have Chipotle down there. Like a bunch of people were on that and. Never happened. Now that would have been killer. Well, the, the problem. Well, well, we this is what we did. We'd had to, uh, everyone put in their order. We had someone go drive. We give them money for the burritos and everything. And we're like, whatever's left is your tip. And they'd go drive up to Kansas City, get a Chipotle, put it in a cooler, and then drive back. Rachel, be, yeah. how long of a drive is that? Hour and a half. Well, two holy hours. hell! Yeah. Our buddy Alan's wife Rachel would go to Kansas City quite a bit. So if we stayed down there and didn't go back up there, we're like, hey. Bring us some Chipotle, and she would always bring us Chipotle. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so she was our Chipotle fetcher. Yep. <laughs> you got to get that fixed sometimes. Yeah. Well, because there wasn't anything. <laughs> yeah. There was no really me – there was one Mexican place, but it was Del like Rio. a sit-down restaurant. Yeah. yeah, there's no – nothing similar to that. Yeah. yeah. It was it's all like, pizza. That's all they had there. It was pizza and McDonald's. Yeah. we had Where our house was, we were right off the main drag Broadway, and we actually had it pretty good Yeah, because we had a donut shop – right across from us and then on the other side of us was a thai place a porn shop and a little further down was a barbecue joint oh you guys really did have and then nice. directly across uh broadway from us was, was taco bell and a drive through liquor store yeah so we were i mean we had it pretty good Hell yeah <laughs> especially when cat worked at the barbecue joint because we get free barbecue every time they closed especially because that's oh that's awesome <laughs> and especially because when you're in college when you're hungover, it just fast food sounds the best anyway. So why not be surrounded? Mm -hmm. by it? And I remember there was one summer I had to stay down there and that was the one summer they decided to knock down and rebuild the Taco Bell. <laughs> you know, as a college kid, that's what you live on. And mm -hmm. I was like, son of a bitch. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the one summer? They, just, they knocked yep. the whole damn thing down and decided to rebuild it. I'm like, come on. Just imagine they had two McDonald's though. One on each side of town. <laughs> yeah. Which... Living where we're where we are now, driving, you know, twenty minutes someplace is not a big deal. When I when I got used to being in Pittsburgh, I'm like, You're kidding me, I gotta go to Walmart is a ten minute drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's all the way down Main Street because Main Street's like twenty five, you got all the stoplights and you're like Yep. It's a chore. But it really wasn't. It really wasn't. <laughs> we or you could take the bypass. It's and be so done funny he says five. that because I think I brought this up last podcast, but I saw him, asked him what he did that day, and he's like, oh, I drove down to wherever, Spring Hill or whatever mm -hmm. to pick up coffee. That's like, what, a 20? No, maybe? it's like, what, to that I coffee shop, like 14 minutes door to door? Maybe, yeah, if that. So 30-minute round trip Yep. for a cup of coffee, but five minutes down to Walmart was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what's, when, you, when you first go down there, it's not a big deal, but once you get used to everything being yeah. close in a small town, then you're like, oh, man, that's actually kind of out of my way. I don't yeah. want to. I definitely got Lincoln. I think is bigger than Pitt. Oh yeah, for I, sure. I, oh yeah. I definitely got that feeling there too because we lived where we were out. We were so close to the campus, grocery store. Everything was right around us. You know, most five minute car trip anywhere. But then moving back, and you're like, Chipotle sounds good, but it's like twelve minutes away. Do I really want to <laughs> drive all the way there? Imagine, yeah, we. If imagine we imagine opening a Chipotle area right down there, you'd make oh, so much money. And I don't know why they wouldn't. It's do a franchise. It. I'm surprised it's yeah. not. A college town. It's like, come yeah, on, yeah. really? I'd put it right directly across where that bookstore is, right mm -hmm. across the street from the campus. Mm -hmm. It's within walking distance for everyone. They actually had a bar right across the street from our campus. Yep. Awesome. I only sweet. went there a couple times, but... That and they also had uh, tropical snow. Yep. That was nice. Yep. Shaved ice. And I, oh. as much as I hate golf, I golfed back then a little bit, and... We did have a golf course. It was a crappy golf course, but it was super cheap. Yep. So you can go play golf for what? Like 
10 bucks with yeah. a cart. And that's 18 holes. Yeah. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, and you know, everybody down there is college kids. So they're not like rich, rich, <laughs> rich pre- playing professionally. So it's not like you got to hurry or be nice. It's like, Oh, if I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts, who cares? Yep. And let me drive down the middle of the fairway and slam on the brakes and see if I can get a 360 going. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So yeah, it was. And I, I <laughs> did work at a golf course for a summer. Yeah. Is that what scarred you? Probably. <laughs> I I don't know. I, I, I just, there's so much to the form that you have to do to actually get the ball to go straight (laughs) i can't do it and i don't have the patience to sit there and do it plus it's expensive it is expensive to to play so yeah a large bucket of balls is like 18 20 bucks now is it i last time i was at sykes ladies it was it was like 11 or 12 for a large i think i paid 18 last summer right there at sycamore ridge Hmm. i mean it's it's not bad but well it's fun every once in a while it used to be like you know three five and eight or some shit yeah. like that it just i got going up and up and up one of the contractors i worked with at my old job pretty close with he uh emailed me the other day he's like hey you want to uh, golf with me on in june or whatever i'm like man i think i'm the only person that hates golf <laughs> i'm like if it's disc golf give me a call but yeah, yeah i'm gonna have to even pass then him. it's like pulling teeth to get yeah. you together sometimes but i'll play that over regular golf any day sure. i don't know i like i like it sometimes just sometimes the scenery of the golf courses are nice. That's nice, but yeah, finding a disc is a lot easier than finding a little white ball. Yep. <laughs> like Man. there's a lot of times I'm like when I when I tee off or whatever I'm like I lose the ball and I'm like I don't even know where the hell That's it went. That's why I don't use white balls. And a sleeve of them, three balls is like if you buy a decent yeah. brand is twelve to fifteen dollars. Well, you're almost guaranteed to lose all three of those mm-hmm. right off the bat. Oh yeah. That's one disc right there that you're not going to lose most likely unless you're throwing over water some crazy woods or something but yeah i don't know i I don't use the white golf balls anymore i got like the bright neon colors and matte colors it's crazy i I have such a harder time following those colors than a white ball yeah because austin blaze colorblind and so he bought a bunch of those thinking it was going to help him well, he can't see the ball anyways. It doesn't matter. But for when I was tracking him for him, you know, I could see the white so much better than the neon. But I don't know if it's just, I don't know. I oh, don't know. I think it stands out in the grass more like a bright orange ball compared to white. Mm. It seems like it, that or I got like matte blue. Mm. So. That seems like it'd be so hard to follow in the air though. Mm, sometimes. Because that's kind of gives you the best reference of where you yeah. need to go look. Better I do like a hot, <laughs> a hot like a reddish pink color. I use those. I can see that being easier to see. <laughs> so, yeah, when I worked at the golf course, it was um, off of seventy fifth and like McCaff. Um, can't remember the name of it. <laughs> anyway, but my favorite part was driving the golf uh, carts, golf carts because they were in the process. It's the one that burnt down. Is it Elk something? No, Milburn. Oh, Milburn Country Club. So it, they were building a new country club and all this stuff, and a cart barn but they still had the old cart barn so we still had to take all the cart that was my favorite part is having to drive the carts back and forth uh to the barn and stuff and charge them up but when they were doing construction they had all these mounds and stuff and of course us being i don't know i was a sophomore or junior in high school probably you have to do dumb shit so we were seeing who could jump it and everything and in my first i think it was my like one of my first days i hit this freaking rant basically and one of the guys got thrown out and we flipped the cart <laughs> <laughs> oh man and another guy broke his arm doing the same thing it's so well, yeah we uh that con- that construction was fun and- dixie while you're doing it like dukes of hazard yeah. <laughs> but it was cool because we were underage but a lot of the members would leave beer and the coolers in the cart so when we parked the cart we would Oh, there's a beer in there. Slam a beer, <laughs> go back, get some more, and then like just back and forth. And back then, you know, your tolerance is pretty low. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you could probably save up three or four when you get off work, have a real good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and I didn't like beer back then, so I had to sit there and just chug, chug it. it. I'm like, oh, this is gross. But then after like two, I was like feeling pretty damn good. All right. <laughs> yeah. But that was a cool thing. Yeah. They would always, some members would leave the beer in there for us. It was I don't know, probably Coors Light, Miller Light, something yeah, like that. Nothing yeah. fancy, but 
I'm like, hell yeah. And then the, I, I had a few one time and they're like, hey, go take this member to whatever course his buddies were playing on. And I didn't know the course that well, so I, he had to give me directions. I'm like, I don't know where I'm going. But being not sober and driving a golf cart with a member, I'm like, oh, my God. Uh-oh. I had to really fuss. One of those white knuckling things. It. Yeah. Why am I white knuckling in a golf cart? But Yeah, it's being on a golf cart, being on a flip golf cart is how I broke my, when I was saying I broke my arm earlier. I snapped it in half. I don't remember if I've told this on the podcast or not, but my – uh, in-laws have a lake house down at the Ozarks and they have a golf cart and they had some family friends come and these girls, Jasmine thinks they were, might've been a little bit younger, but I could sworn they were like 12 at the time. And the mom asked if I would let them drive the golf cart because they had neighbors that had younger boys that I'd always go and let them drive the golf cart too. And, uh, so we go to drive it. Mason wants to come along too because he's got a paintball gun. So as we're driving, he's sitting on the back just <laughs> tattooing. So, um, so at first I'm sitting in the middle and I'm controlling the pedal, letting them steer, you know, whatever. Both of them do great. They're like, all right, can we try it with uh, doing both the pedal and the and steering at the same time? I said, yeah, but you can only go half speed. You can't go full speed. First girl, perfectly fine. She, I tell her, drive to this parking lot. You'll park. The other girl will drive back. We'll be done. She drives to the parking lot. Good to go. No problems. They swap seats. Second girl goes. She's in the parking lot. All she has to do is take a... <laughs> Let's see how it was. Take a right onto the... Um, take a right onto the road and head back the way we just came. Well, she takes a right doesn't get it right enough and floors it and we go down into a ditch and just the whole thing flips <laughs> and I'm in between the two of them and as we were falling like I think I would have been fine if I didn't have to protect her but I put my arm down so I didn't land on top of her and crush her and I think her weight is what snapped my arm clean in half so <laughs> I can send Keith a picture of it so he can put it up if he feels like it but both bones not compound but both bones were completely snapped and the closest hospital is probably about 40 minutes away from where their lake house is. So yeah. Mason, thank God, was there because my leg was also trapped underneath. Mason deadlifts it up. Fucking, I think he slipped a disc in the process of doing it. I get my leg out. I stand up or I try and push myself up and my arm just bends. And I'm like, ooh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I get up and I'm like, Mason, is, I just is in shock, I think. I'm like, Mason, is this bad? And I'm going like this and my arm in the middle is just wiggling like this. He's like, stop fucking doing that. And he starts sprinting and yelling help. And I'm like, Mason, Mason, use your phone. Do not run back to the house. Pulls out his phone. They come pick me up. We go back to the house so they can actually look at it. They're like, oh, yeah, that's broke as fuck. So Jasmine – Tries to make me a sling out of a out of a beer box that she folded in half and thought like I could set my arm in there like a taco. Well, every bump in the road is just flopping it. So I ended up just leaning over and letting my I was in the back seat and just letting my arm hang straight down because that was the the only way. And then this is all right, this is the last part of the story. We get there, they see how bad my arm is broken, so they get me in immediately. Emergency rooms, fourth of July weekend, so it's pretty packed already with people who've fucked themselves up with the fireworks. <laughs> They get me in, they get the uh, they get the morphine in me, immediately feel like I'm floating. I never felt the sensation. I think when you're in that much pain and then like there's just nothing, you just feel like you're floating. So when your bones snap like that, your muscles contract. So if you know your bones line up like this normally, when they snap, the muscles contract. So my arm was actually shorter. So the surgeon wasn't going to be able to get there until the morning. So they needed to stretch the muscles out so they could set it in a sling and get the bones realigned. Well, right as they're about to do that, dude comes in with a heart attack. They're already short-staffed. They have to pull everybody away. They come back, and by the time they're ready to actually do it, I'm starting to feel pain again, but they wanted to get it set up right away um, so there was, you know, for risk of nerve nerve damage, And but they couldn't give me another round of morphine yet they were gonna have to wait like an hour before they could do that and they're like we need to get it set now because otherwise nerve damage can come into play so (laughs) jasmine says you were just tripping because you're on morphine but i swear to god that the nurse the male nurse had his his leg in my (laughs) armpit and was just fucking pulling on that thing to get it in the sling (laughs) and that was probably 
that hurt worse than the brake or the car ride by far. Oh, yeah. And then, it, you know, two plates and 12 screws later, here we go. And a couple <laughs> badass scars as well. So. He beeps every time he goes to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> they always have to do a cavity search. I'm like, I swear it's in my arm. <laughs> no, okay, sir. Yep. <laughs> Man, that would suck. So anyways, yeah, that was that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I've only broken my ankle. And that was enough. <laughs> mm. That was during football practice. Yikes. Yeah. And the coach is like, oh, it's just a sprain. Just walk it off. So I'm sitting there walking. And you know, like, I could hear stuff moving. Clicking and scratching yeah. and rounding. And, and I was like, this is not right. And he made me walk around the field. I was mm-hmm. like, fuck. And I was like, I still got to ride my bike home. It's like a two-mile bike ride. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> so I'm sitting there just like, I didn't even get undressed and change into street clothes. I just like, all right, I'm going home. And I'm sitting there like pedaling with one, one leg foot. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my God, I get up home up the stairs. And my dad's like, what's wrong with you? And I, I think at that point I went into shock and my, <laughs> he looks down at my ankle and it's the size of a softball. He's like, what? In the oh. hell? And they rushed me to the ER. And they're Did like, they have a word with your coach after? Like, oh, yeah. what the fuck? You couldn't have given them a ride yeah. home, motherfucker? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, these kids these days don't well, know what we had. That was before cell phones, too. Yeah, I was going to say, they, <laughs> kids these days don't know what we had to go through yeah. before cell phones. <laughs> What'd you do when you came to a hill? Just hope you had enough uh, momentum going? I was sitting there, like, m- the majority of it was flat until uh-huh. I got to my neighborhood, and then I had, like, one hill. So I was sitting there, I walked, <laughs> or hobbled, walked it as much as I could, and then I got up the hill, and then I just... I pretty much let it Superman. <laughs> and I was like, all right, just get up on this hill and get up on my thing. And I pretty much threw my bike and jumped off ramp stairs. All on yeah. Foot. Oof. yeah. Keith, you broke anything? Mm. Broke my wrist. How'd you do that? <laughs> so I told my parents <laughs> for the longest time like that this was the story <laughs> is I, I forgot how old I was, but I was young. And so my, my dad had put, had bought a play set. But he hadn't put it, put it together yet, so he kind of had it leaning against the shed. Mm-hmm. And then me and a buddy got caught kind of climbing on that. He said, don't do that. So okay, whatever. So being a kid, I'm like, oh, I'm still going to do it. So I actually climbed it, got on top of the shed roof. I'm like, cool, I'm king of the world. But then uh, I'm like, all right, I got to get to get down. And getting up on something's a lot easier than coming back down. So I thought when I was putting my foot, you know, down, I was going to step on something, but I didn't. So I fell off the shed roof Mm -hmm. and I landed on my wrist and broke it. So I go inside and my mom's like, what's wrong? I'm like, ah, my wrist hurts. No big deal. Right. So I, I, she ends up taking me to the hospital and they say it's broken. So they're like, how did you break it? Well, I didn't want to tell them the truth because I would have gotten in trouble. Uh-huh. And I got in trouble a lot as a kid anyway. So um, I told them that the dog, like, because we had a dog that would uh, run run all the time. So he, he was at the end of his leash and tripped me. And that's how I fell and broke it. Mm-hmm. So and up until probably, I don't know, eight years ago. They believe that's what happened. <laughs> you must be a pretty damn and convincing this, liar. This poor dog, I blame so much on. <laughs> and it was <laughs> no, this wasn't Petey. This okay. was another one. They got rid of him for reasons, probably because of, of me. You. <laughs> really, this dog was probably pretty good, but I blamed a lot of shit on him. <laughs> but yeah, they. Uh, I think I was. Once, once, you know, I moved out, got my own job. I think I was like probably late twenties by the time I told them what happened. And of course I didn't, we were drinking. So I'm like, Oh, Hey guys, remember that time? <laughs> Cause my mom was all, and dad always lied to their parents and, but they would always go drinking. I'm like, I would never did that. I never went out and snuck drinking except for that time at the golf course. But I'm like, but guess what guys, remember that dog that I was, you guys thought was really bad. It was actually just me. <laughs> he didn't trip me. I broke my arm falling off the shed. And how old, I wasn't supposed to. How old were you again when you? Oh God, I was. When you broke it. Uh, it was when we lived in Edwardsville, so before Apache, so probably. Well, that was kindergarten, so. So before kindergarten. It was, it was after that. I don't know, or maybe, I don't know. I I was young. Like early, <laughs> because when I was that young, if I tried to lie about shit like that, I'd get nervous and start stammering, and they knew I was lying immediately. You broke your wrist, and they just were like, "Oh yeah, he tripped over the dog." <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I got lucky because my parents were really young mm-hmm. when they had us, so yeah. they were a little more 
<laughs> but I, I mean, I, I was convincing because they had some problems with that dog. That dog, I knew he was a little bit of a nuisance. So I'm like, yeah, fucker, you're taking the blame. <laughs> you're taking a fall for this guy. Sorry. I'm not getting in trouble. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple other things I blamed on the dog, and they ended up getting rid of him. Poor guy. <laughs> All because of Keith. Yep. Okay, but yeah, that's um, the only actual. Like I've obviously gotten stitches everywhere, but the only bone I broke was my left wrist. Really? Mm-hmm. And I only have stitches on the where the bone was broken. Nice. Cut a lot of stuff open, but my mom was a big believer in, let's just put super glue, squeeze it together and put super, super glue. glue on it. Yep, yep. Yeah. I've done that a couple left. times. Yeah. Heck yeah. Super yeah, I know those uh, bullets aren't cold in the glass anymore. Yep, super glue does wonders. I've done that a couple of times already. Do you uh, see any gnarly stuff when you were in the military? The craziest thing I saw uh, was actually when we were, I was doing a SOT 3s, which is where we go and certify elevators. And we had to lift weights. And I'm talking like 4,000 pound weights. We're lifting up on like chain hoist. And so are those like the counterbalances for the No, we're doing it. Elevator? We're putting we're weight testing it mm. on the elevator mm. and we had to put like on static loads of like 12,000 pounds. So you had like five, six blocks that are 4,000 pounds and they got straps that are on a chain hoist and one of the straps broke loose and hit the dude in the head cold, knocked him out, started bleeding. And I was like, uh, fuck, what do we do? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Cause shit. I've never seen that. And I was like, that strap was just, <laughs> and I was just like, so we called for emergency and they, Ended up getting him up, taking care of him. He went to the hospital. Couldn't remember a damn thing that happened to him. And like... Severe, severe concussion. Yeah, severe concussion. And then like he didn't come back for like a month, month and a half. Holy Jeez. shit. He was messed up. And then so they did an investigation. And then OSHA tried coming on board. Well, you can't have a crack right here. I was like, that's the crack for the elevator to go up and down. You can't have it be perfect level. I was like, what, what, what are you OSHA trying? gets involved in the military? Well, we got... Well, since we were on base, OSHA was. It was weird. OSHA can be on yeah. military base. Yeah. Really? We, we had civilians, too, that were contractors, so oh, they would be under OSHA. Huh. And with when I was doing SOTS, we'd have us, military. We'd have the ship, which was military, but we also had contractors with us that were doing some of the labor. So they came on and was like, did a whole investigation. I guess that shop, they're, they called them the... Like the lift shop, I guess. All their straps were out of date. They weren't <laughs> calibrated like they were supposed to. <laughs> Jeez. And they're like, were you all wearing your helmets? We're like, yeah. He was wearing his too. Of course and, we were. But it, like we all were, but it snapped. That much pressure, obviously. He's that, gonna... Yeah, that. And the only other thing I saw was a crane fell on our ship. The guy didn't put all the outriggers out and it was really windy. And it blew over and about hit a, a, a chick on the ship. Oh, <laughs> shit. It was freaking crazy. They had to cut the crane pretty much off the ship <laughs> and they're like everyone from the naval base was there like all the admirals all the big wigs and they're like this has never happened before we've never seen this i was like what in the hell how have you never seen this in 20 30 years <laughs> this has to have happened right i was like accidents happen all the time by the time the guy was at the end of the pier he was already fired but that was like his first accident in like 30 years so by the, by the time he got to the end of the pier he already had his job lined up for the next one damn <laughs> i was nice. like God dang, we're out there watching them cut it in half and then pull it away from the ship and we had to go check for structural damage. But that was about the craziest stuff. What was your battle station on the ship? Like if shit was going down, what was your responsibility? Well, it depends. Like, because I was flying squad, which was like the elite for damage control. And what, what Were you on a... I was on a cruiser. Okay. So we only had like 300 people, so... Only? It, yeah. <laughs> but... uh Shit hit the fan. If it was anything fire related or anything like that, I was like a first responder for that. Fi you said fire for fires, uh, so helicopters. Say, say somebody like war, like somebody decided to like unload on you guys for whatever reason. I would probably be in the engine room and then at one of the uh, damage control augers because I was mostly engineering, so I was down in the hole. A damage control auger. What is that? Damage control locker. Oh, gotcha. I thought you said auger, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, locker. So what? What? what is that? So if something, let's say a fire broke out, 
-hmm. we have three lockers on the ship you depending on the size of the ship so you got pretty much middle forward and aft of so you'd go wherever that incident happened you'd report to that locker in the general area and then you'd go usually you have inspectors or investigators which is what i would do i'd go investigate see if i see any damage if i can see a fire if there is a fire i'd try to put it out first but if i had to evacuate i'd call like hey there is a fire this is where it's located at and then they'd bring the fire team up with a team leader and they'd tr try to put out the fire hmm. it, it gets crazy there's like how many fires happen on a boat Oh, they happen all the time. Or ship, I guess I should say. Yeah, because we feel like that happen all the time. Yeah, they do. They do happen. Yeah, it's crazy. So, so like those lockers are they similar to when a bring battle up? station? Pretty much. So they have the in these lockers. They usually have someone that's in control, like a, a locker captain, pretty much. And they're in charge, and their communications with you, the CEO, and like uh, the engineering room, and they're talking to them like, "Hey, this is what's going on. Our investigators are out." They didn't use any air or if they did if we did you go on air we'd be like hey we went on air at this time because i only had a 30 minute bottle everyone else had a 45. so they kept track of times on bottles and if we needed a recharge and i think what keith's really trying to ask you is where did you get locked and loaded if it came down to yeah like were you i would be inside the skin of the ship so you weren't out guns blazing i know like you didn't get one of those i don't know the well, we have. I remember Pearl Harbor and Cuba Gooding Jr. where oh, he's the, on that the fifty cal, whatever well, that is. Yeah, it just depends. Cause <laughs> we have we do. They have watch standards. That'd be for, so fun. <laughs> <laughs> they do have watch standards for that, and you got to get qualified for those stations. So gotcha. you got to get fifty. Dude, I'd be like all over that. Like it's cool. Like I've got to fire it, and it's just like it is just. Bah, bah, bah. Is it loud as shit? Does it blow your ears yeah, out? That and then like the five inch cannons mm -hmm. when we would do trainings with those oh my gosh that he's a so warrior hard. though he's like i want to be in that that's probably the first thing that they target yeah <laughs> he's like, like i don't care well some of the crazy <laughs> things was like when we got we had to get certified to go under for deployments and stuff mm -hmm. so you, one of our thing was like terrorist attack on the ship like if we were in port like you know the uss cole when they're doing the unloading so if we saw a swimmer we'd have to get a fire hose first and try to push him away <laughs> with a fire hose <laughs> or pretty much drown them is what they taught you huh and then like if worse comes to worse then you open fire i i would imagine <laughs> i would i would think that that'd be the first go-to well you could drown them with these fire hoses it's 120 psi coming at you yeah but yeah i also feel like shooting a gun in a inside of a steel case would just be everybody's ears would just i mean yeah it'd be total in the movies that never happens people shoot guns <laughs> well, indoors all yeah. the time of course pew, pew. <laughs> like the silencers but usually inside the skin of the ship we got a couple people that you're are saying scud skin of the ship skin skin yeah inside the skin of the ship so you're inside of it so we called it mm. but we do like if we're going into port anywhere we usually have people manned outside with the 50 cal we had a 240 bravo on the rear and then you had the five inch nice and then up top we also had the sea whiz which that guns a what a sea whiz what is that it's like pretty much a gatling gun nice it's and it's like thirty thousand rounds and those are automatic right like yeah. nobody like they're just well you can we got in combat they had someone that could look at the because it has a camera you can sit there and look and zoom in on stuff but it's usually for anti-air gotcha there's plenty nice. of videos on youtube with that thing it's just like oh that's badass <laughs> So, <laughs> it is Draftsmas Eve, fellas. Yep. yep. We got the draft tomorrow. I've well, not we, done we my don't. research. The Chiefs do. Yeah, but <laughs> we're, honora yeah. we're honorary <laughs> Chiefs, duh, Keith. Yep. Nerd. Anyways, <laughs> so uh, Chris was saying he's done a decent amount of research on it. I haven't, but at least next uh, next podcast. I'll have looked at who we picked and kind of done some research. So I'll be able to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's crazy trying to – there's so many scenarios. <laughs> yeah. And then listen to other people's. It's like – I feel like we need a new quarterback. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Chris showed up today. I saw the Chiefs. He saw my shirt. We gave each other the nod. He's yeah. like, what's going what on, guys? What are you guys doing? <laughs> I think it's not football season. Just kidding. Just kidding. Keith knew. He knew the second we – Yeah. Like, but uh, – I only knew that because I saw an article – online that it was andy reed holding up a two and there's like two, two days, days away yep i think that was yesterday but yep. oh 
Like, all right. Not like we're. Did you see uh, AFC. who won the uh, <laughs> golf tournament? Justin Timberlake's and Jimmy Fallon's golf tournament. Mm-mm. Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Mm. <laughs> Is yep. that the celebrity one? Yeah. I won. watched the highlights from last year, and they were both damn good. So yeah, they good won for it him. this year. Hell yeah. He's so crazy. Both of them are, but Patrick's so crazy competitive. He probably did nothing but golf for the last month. Well, he has a chipping course in his backyard. Yeah, he's must be nice. Oh, some guy at work was trying to tell me that the entire NFL, the entire season's fixed. And I'm like, you're telling me that the most hyper-competitive human beings in the world all have agreed that, yep, well, I guess this is how it's got to happen. I'm not going to try my hardest. No, no way. I'm going to blow out my knee this game. Yeah. yeah. Now, the NBA, I understand the possibility of them being able to fix certain games, but I don't think the whole thing's rigged because a ref can call two quick fouls on the best player. Now he has to play conservative for the rest of the mm-hmm. game. But in the NFL, you're really like... I don't know. I've heard stories back when like Allen Iverson <laughs> and stuff, and they were talking like the refs were calling like everything on him one game mm-hmm. just because of something that the league... I guess he said something. The refs didn't agree with it, so they're like foul, 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 foul. or that carry, or, carry that or uh, Vegas. Yeah, you know, ring, 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 ring. Well, we need this is the line, so get as tight as you can, boys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't but know. anyways, all right. Well, you got anything else? I don't think so. Didn't have a whole lot for this week. Uh, kind of creeped <laughs> up on me actually. <laughs> yeah, starting the new job and everything. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, finally able to go buy my equipment today so i was doing that before the <laughs> podcast and yeah unfortunately i think next week i'm going to actually start working <laughs> it's been nice oh, i've been in training the last couple of weeks and it's not really training because i already know how to do it uh, <laughs> so just yeah but nice but yep so check out that uh new video on the youtube channel about that um masterpiece arms defender thing's pretty cool and then you guys have any video ideas let me know or any topics that you guys want us to listen to on the podcast Um, Nate, we're talking to you leave a comment down below yeah (laughs) yeah and so i think on youtube if there's somewhere on the homepage where there's an email address you can directly email us or just comment on a video or or anything like that and if you're listening on spotify hit that follow button and also we are are on apple Podcasts too now be, uh, yes, we are on Apple Podcast now, finally. <laughs> be looking out for our merch drop coming soon as well. <laughs> yeah. That I, don't know, I don't know about how soon. <laughs> I was looking into that, and then it's like, oh, start designing your shirts. And I'm like, ah, that's when – because i got to find the right pictures. And it's, it's His wife had, um, had one of her friends do this mock-up uh, of a couple different um, – of the females because like on the back of the current shirts there's a girl a pinup girl with a machine gun or whatever and his wife keith's wife had marie had her friend do a couple mock-ups and they look awesome but he hasn't done anything with them yet so we'll see i haven't had the time but yeah because i have to actually, i haven't had the time yeah. what did you do these last two weeks <laughs> i did training no, <laughs> no. yeah no, no, no. eventually we'll have some merch to drop so i was kidding i'm gonna keep saying it every week though hey and one of these weeks it'll happen. <laughs> well, maybe on podcast you did, number fifty. You but did drop a new YouTube channel too. Yes, we. T- I think I talked about that. We last talked week. about. Did yep. we? Yep. You, were, you were dropping it that night. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I did. Finally, I launched. Um, since it's a new channel, it doesn't get pushed very hard. So um, I do have a link to it on the boom main boom six channel. I think on the ch- a banner up there, I think there might be a link to it or something, but shotgun studio, check that out. I only have three videos right now. I'm going to be working on some more reviewing some of this stuff that we use and kind of the setup as well. So keep a lookout for that channel. Subscribe if you can, cause it'd be nice to get that one up and going pretty good as well. Definitely check out the uh, video on the King B or whatever it's called. The neat worker B. The neat worker B. Right, what he's yeah. using. That that is an interesting microphone. And I don't know how well it actually picks up in here. I think I flipped it around and showed it last time. Yeah, you time. did. You did. And just what it comes with is pretty cool. So, and it's eighty bucks. It's yeah, Keith, one of the cheapest microphones yeah. that we have here. So Keith showed me the video and he had had me come up here just to test it out and then without my consent, use me on his last video for, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it is funny because it's me not knowing I'm being recorded, like actually jacking yeah. around with it. You can actually hear how it sounds. So I had a couple uh, drinks in you at that time too. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I I was going through the footage and that was in there. I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I'm using this. Yeah. 
He always does that. He just gets me a little tipsy and goes, all right, come on, let's go play with some of these toys and see what happens. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. She's always taking advantage of me, guys. Yep. yep. Sorry. I think we just kind of blew out the uh, microphones there for a second. <laughs> cool. Awesome, guys. Well, we appreciate you watching this week and stay tuned for episode 21 next week. Have a good one.